Hello, I'm Bruce from New England Solar Hot Water. Uh, this is the third in a series of videos. In this video, uh, I'm going to talk about some of the key differences between the smart solar technology and conventional hybrid water heaters. Um, the basis of this design, the premise of, of this design and innovation, assumes that it's a good thing to be taking energy from outdoors, outside the conditioned space, and using it to heat water, as opposed to a conventional hybrid water heater which uh, extracts heat energy from inside the conditioned space to create hot water. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna get into that a little bit. In the case of a hybrid water heater, where you're, where you're in a, an area of the country where you have to heat your house, um, the, the heat that's consumed by the hybrid water heater has a cost, and that cost is dependent on the type of the fuel in your heating system and stuff like that. Um, easy way to think about it is if you stand next to a hybrid water heater, it's blowing cold air. Uh, it's, it's, it's sucking in warm room air, say at 70 degrees, and it's blowing out uh, cold air at say 50 degrees and, the, and that temperature difference, that's the energy along with the electrical usage of the compressor that goes to heat your hot water. And you say, well, the, well the, you know, it's a large house and the, and, the, and the heating system is heating the house anyway. Well, yes it is, but now you're adding to the heating load. It's no different than if, than if you opened a window in winter and, and let in a similar amount of cold, uh, of cold air. And then perhaps you, you might say, well, okay, I'm not gonna blow the cold air in my house I'm gonna blow it outside, and you could buy ducting kits to do exactly that. Um, the problem with that is if you take that thousand cubic feet, just a number, thousand cubic feet of 50 degree air, and blow it outside, it's going to create a pressure imbalance, which means that, a, which means that air is going to infiltrate from outside the home to the inside, through all the cracks in the windows and places where you can't feel it, all the normal places how air gets into a house. Well, if it's heating system and it's 30, and it's 30 degrees out, you're taking 50 degree air, blowing it outside, and now you're basically sucking in 30 degree air. So that, so that doesn't work either. So you say, well, okay, I will, I will take my cold air from outside and then I will exhaust my, my, my cold air uh, back outside. I'll take cold air from outside to run my heat pump and then I'll send it back outside. Again, the problem with that is that the, the heat pump won't work. Um, the, uh, the efficiency of a heat pump, the nameplate efficiency is based on a standard test condition uh, with humidity and air movement and, and, and importantly air temperature. So if it's heating season and you're, you're, you're sucking in say 40 or even 30 degree air from outside, uh, the efficiency is going to be something else. You know, every, every refrigerant and every heat pump has a curve where it relates efficiency and capacity to outdoor, to lots of things, but to outdoor temperature uh, or, or, or inlet air temperature being one of them. So your heat pump's not going to work, A, at the efficiency that it's designed for, if you're ingesting uh, cold air to, to run the heat pump, and B, it's not going to work anyway. Most heat pumps will, will, will turn themselves off uh, if they see, you know, say, for example, 40 degree cold air. And the reason they do that is because the, the coil, uh, you know, the coil next to the fan on top of the heat pump, that will start to frost up. If it frosts up, that coil clogs and there's no longer airflow, and it's, you know, it doesn't do anything anymore except overheat and turn itself off. So there, there's, there's lots of problems with um, conventional hybrid water heaters if you live in an area of the country where you heat your home. And the, the degree to which it's a bad thing varies on a lot of things. How much hot water you use, the type of fuel, the type of heating system, stuff like that. Now you could argue, so what's the good news? Uh, you could argue that in the South where you're not heating your, your, your home at all, um, and you've got a garage, for example, that's hot, that putting a conventional hybrid water heater in that garage where there's essentially free heat because it's not coming from the, the home's heating system uh, and you're decreasing the temperature of that garage as you operate that hybrid water heater. Not only that, but you're providing some de dehumidification. Uh, that's probably a good thing. Yes, w w without question. Not only that, um, but please don't take this commentary to, uh, uh, as, as an attempt to say that there's no, there's no downsides to the smart solar uh, heating technology. You know, in, in, in building and in technology and, and, uh, and in energy efficiency, there's always trade-offs, and, and that's the case with smart solar as well. So what's the trade-off? The trade-off is, is that since we're consuming outdoor air, you know, the, the quality of that air, the heat capacity of that air can, can vary tremendously, right? On a humid day in August, you know, the, the, this panel is, is absorbing much more energy than on a cold night in January. So that means that the operating cost of smart solar summer versus winter, the seasonal operating cost delta is extremely high. In the summer, the coefficient of performance for a smart solar system you know, could be four, and in the, uh, you know, in the winter, it could, be, it could be two or even less. But nonetheless, on an annual basis, it's still, you know, it's, it's still a higher COP than resistance heating, and still, in most cases, 
a higher COP of a conventional hybrid water heater, uh, especially as you consider the, uh, the hidden cost or the uncalculated cost of uh, an additional toll on a space heating system. Um, again, uh, to reinforce the point that hybrid water heaters are, uh, conventional hybrid water heaters will remain an extremely large and important part of electrification uh, and energy efficiency. You know, one, one of the manufacturers says that uh, by the year 2030, uh, the number of heat pump water heaters sold will increase by 2,000 um, percent and that the number of uh, new water heaters that are installed that are that are that are hybrid conventional uh, heat pump water heaters will be 35 or 40 percent so there's lots of things driving that you know so social uh, social pressures towards electrification and getting away from fossil fuels but mostly regulation right regulations are changing and heat pump water heaters are, are here to stay uh, smart solar water heating system with the outdoor panel or a hybrid water heater, uh, you know, that, that, that goes in your basement and consumes room air. So in the, in the link to this video, excuse me, in the comments of this video, there's three links. There's, uh, there's two separate studies that talk about the performance of conventional hybrid water heaters in, in cold climates. Um, and there's an additional link, uh, and it's a discussion by two, two very smart people here in Massachusetts, my home state, where they talk about the true coefficient performance the true cost of operating a hybrid water heater if it's using air that's warmed by an air source heat pump. So they call that two heat pumps in series. You have one heat pump, which is a heat pump that's heating your hot water, a conventional hybrid water heater. Then you have the, the, the heat pump that's providing uh, that hot air, which, which in the case, uh, case of interest for their study is a, um, is, is, is a mini split or, or ducted uh, system. So. Um, that's it for this segment. The next segment, we're gonna get into uh, rebates and incentives and the, and the operating costs for smart solar.